So here we're going to discuss the relationship between the continuous time Fourier transform and the discrete time Fourier transform. So let's think of a signal, a continuous time signal, and xt, and it has a Fourier transform if it's a low pass signal. It has a Fourier transform uh, that looks, let's say, like this, with a cutoff frequency of, dummy, of omega c. And we typically say x, capital X of j omega. So this is our Fourier transform of a low pass signal. This is what the signal looks like. Okay, now continuous time sampling says we're going to multiply our time domain signal by a train of ideal delta functions. And if we do that, then we get a signal which looks like this. It's a sampled signal of our of delta functions and this has a Fourier transform and we've we know that this Fourier transform has repeats of the baseband signal centered on the sampling frequency and I'm only drawing two here but they go um, all the way uh, to infinity, repeats, repeated versions of the Fourier transform. So this is a continuous time Fourier transform, continuous time Fourier transform of this signal. It's in continuous time, uh, and this, but this is the sampled signal, and these are ideal delta functions that we're showing here. So we'll call this X, S for X sampled, and therefore this we call uh, xs j omega that's the Fourier transform of this the continuous time Fourier transform now also we have the concept of discrete time signals and then we have Fourier transforms of the discrete time signals so a discrete time signal if we took this and we simply kept the values at the times when the samples happened and this is our discrete time signal so a discrete time signal is plotted, doesn't exist between these samples, it only has the values. This, this one here, continuous time, it is a, these are fu delta functions, they do exist between the deltas, they just equal zero between the deltas. Whereas here in discrete time, they don't exist between, it's defined only at integer values. So this is a discrete time signal here, so this is x, s, in discrete time we use square brackets and an n where n is an integer and this also has a Fourier transform and often the question is how do these two things relate one thing we know for the discrete time is that the basis functions repeat at 2 pi now you can uh, prove that to yourself or maybe I'll just uh, uh, quickly uh, we often use e to the j omega here for the Fourier transform of the discrete time signal. And how do we know they repeat at 2 pi? Well, uh, just simple, if we did cos, if we take cos of any sampling, any frequency omega naught, uh, and if we added 2 pi to that, because it's in discrete time, n is only discrete, this thing here equals, we can expand this out to cos omega naught n times cos of 2 pi n uh, plus, sorry, minus sine of omega naught n times sine of 2 pi n because n is an integer, sine of 2 pi times an integer always equals 0 and cos of 2 pi times an integer always equals 1. So this equals cos of omega naught n. So cos of omega naught plus 2 pi times n is equal to cos of omega naught n. And the same goes for negative 2 pi or 4 pi or 6 pi or negative 6 pi and so on. So the basis functions repeat in discrete time signals and they repeat at 2 pi. That's why this is at 2 pi. Um, Another way to visualize that is in terms of waveforms, which I always like to think about. Uh, let me sketch a waveform for you here. Um, a discrete time signal 
for example, let's say the discrete time signal equals 1, and then minus 1, and then plus 1, and then minus 1, for example, uh, repeating, then this has a sinusoidal cos wave going through it, where that cos wave satisfies the samples. But I can draw another cos wave that satisfies the samples, uh, and that's this one. Uh, and then here, and then here, and then so on. So there's two different causeways I've drawn, both of which satisfy the samples. And they are 2 pi separated. So this second one I drew is a 2 pi higher frequency than the original one. You can see both of these waveforms go through our samples, so they satisfy our signal, and so we, they appear in the frequency domain. And so now the question students often ask is, well, we have this is a Fourier transform of a continuous time sampled waveform, and this is a Fourier transform of a discrete time waveform, and how do these two things relate to each other? And the answer is actually uh, quite uh, straightforward. This is omega c, so this one here, the bandwidth is the same as the continuous time one, we're still in continuous time. Um, and this is omega s. Now the question is, what? how does the omega s relate to the 2 pi, and how does the omega c relate to this value here? And it's a simple scaling. And we can see that by here, these are separated by 1 here. Uh, this is our definition of discrete time. All of the samples are separated by 1, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. These ones are separated by capital T. So they are T, 2T, 3T, 4T. And so the sampling rate is effectively uh, different. Omega s equals 2 pi f, which is 2 pi divided by capital T. So the 2 pi divided by capital T in the continuous time, the Fourier transform of the continuous time signal, it is sampled, but it's still continuous time. These are ideal continuous time delta functions. So this is the, the replicas appear at the sampling rate, which is 2 pi divided by capital T. Here, simply, you can now should be able to see that all of this simply scales down with the 2 pi divided by capital T scales down to 2 pi, and the omega C scales down to be that value there is omega C times T. Um, and so we multiply this by, we, this thing here is takes t between the samples, so there is a 1 divided by t on the sampling side, on the frequency side. And so to convert from this to this, uh, we multiply the frequency by t. And so these appear uh, scaled down if, this is, if the t is such that omega s is bigger than 2 pi. So if... Uh, if we had a bigger value of t, then omega s would be uh, closer in uh, here, uh, and then we would be scaling less to get to 2 pi. So the discrete time signal always repeats at 2 pi, so this is fixed, and there's a scaling on our signal, which depends on our sampling period. So this is how these two relate. They are the same function, just scaled and it simply comes down because in discrete time, the sampling is at an integer of one difference between the samples, and in continuous time, it's capital T. It's whatever your sampling period is. If you're not sure about why this Fourier transform is here, there's a link to click on to see the Fourier transform of a sampled waveform for continuous time. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video and uh, check out the other videos on the channel.